The next question. Thanks, Karen Corley, Minister. This is obviously a continuation of the discussion we've had earlier about the activities in the uh, Mediterranean. I know you have clarified that the ECNA is not involved in Operation Triton and is there on uh, humanitarian grounds, but you did, if you like, um, combat the straw man and talk about um, that doing nothing wasn't an option, even though nobody was arguing that we should do nothing. The reality is that Operation Triton and what's going on presently replaced the Mara Nostrum programme, which costs €9 million Euros a month, whereas Operation Triton is costing €3 million. And the reality is, is that the EU has put up its borders and is making it more difficult Thank for uh, refugees. So what we're asking is, should Ireland not be playing a much more positive role? Being neutral is not the same as doing nothing. Thank you, Minister. I'm glad we agree on that, uh, that, that being neutral is not the same as doing nothing. Uh, and we're doing a lot. Um, but we're doing a lot. I mean, don't forget, this is, this is the first time an Irish naval vessel has ever gone overseas on a mission like this. Uh, you know, Any time that, that, that the Etna has gone overseas, and it has gone overseas, has essentially been on diplomatic missions, um, as opposed to a, a, uh, a humanitarian mission like this. So, so this is a new departure for the... Um, uh, for the Naval Service. They're doing a really, really good job uh, 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 under uh, quite difficult circumstances. Um, um, I have to say that I think most people would recognise that it was a mistake to essentially downgrade Mare Nostrum in terms of what was being spent there uh, as regards capacity in the Mediterranean uh, to deal with assisting uh, migrants coming across the Mediterranean, uh, and that is why now we are seeing a you know, significant increase in activity there now on humanitarian grounds. Uh, and that is my focus, it's the focus of the, uh, of the Defence Forces and of the Naval Service. If that should change, uh, uh, I've explained earlier that it can only change on the back of the UN Security Council resolution, and of course the application of the triple lock and so on, should we be part of anything, um, anything broader than that. Uh, but, but for the moment, our focus and, uh, and I think our role, which has been highly effective in the last 10 days, um, uh, will continue to be effective through the summer. And I expect we will maintain a presence from a, from a search and rescue and humanitarian point of view until at least the end of September. Thank you. Deputy Claire Daly. Um, in light of what you've said, Minister, I wonder do you agree with the uh, words of the President, Michael D. Higgins, who said that it's the failure at EU level which has turned the Mediterranean into a graveyard. And given that you've said that you didn't agree with the downscaling of the Mara Nostrum um, operation, are we to take it that at EU level then, the Irish government is arguing for a search and rescue operation to be restored to that level, rather than what is currently embarked upon? Uh, what is your attitude, if you like, to the suspension of the Dublin Convention, which means people arriving in an EU country have to be processed for asylum in that country, which is causing huge problems for Italy and Greece? And have you advanced the discussions in terms of taking extra refugees? Because I don't know if you saw the excellent letter produced by Ed Horgan, the uh, famous uh, peace activist in Limerick, former Irish officer, who made the point that on the 11th of April this year, 300 asylum seekers drowned on the Mediterranean. The very same day that the EU launched a spacecraft into space and recovered that in the Pacific Ocean, if you like, a piece of hardware at a cost of 150 million euros. Now, is it not obscene that we would spend 150 million euros on rescuing a piece of hardware and yet downgrade a rescue operation at which the lives of hundreds of people are at risk, particularly when we've been complicit in making them refugees in the first place. Thank you. And I mean, we've, we've heard you saying that we have to look at that, that there's no immediate solution, that an immediate solution isn't there. Well, we know that, but you know what? Non-intervention would be a very good start to stop the flood of refugees by stopping interfering in their countries in the first place. Thank you. Minister, to conclude. A lot of questions and comments there. I mean, can I just say? I mean, I've, I, I think I've dealt with most of them uh, uh, on, on previous questions. Uh, what I said is that I think most people would accept that it was a mistake to to reduce the resource level uh, in terms of uh, search and rescue and assistance of migrants in the Mediterranean. I think most people would accept that. Um, certainly, the the tragedy and the drownings that happened um, um, in the last six weeks or so, up until the last number of weeks. 
um, uh, was, was something that shocked a lot of people. Uh, uh, and as a result, countries like Ireland and a number of others uh, have dramatically increased uh, the resources that we are now applying to trying to, to provide uh, some partial solutions to the problem, which is focused for the moment on, uh, on search and rescue and humanitarian assistance. And that's a good thing. You know, and I think rather than focusing on uh, mistakes that have been made in the past, we should now focus on trying to solve problems. Uh, and Ireland wants to contribute to that effort. Uh, and I think we're doing a reasonable job. Uh, in fact, I think we're doing an excellent job from a search and rescue point of view at the moment. But we will, of course, contribute to the broader debate as well in terms of how Europe collectively can help to, uh, to, um, to tackle and address the reasons why we have the kind of mass migration numbers that are now evident coming through Libya and North Africa. Thank you, Minister.